to everyone joining us here in the sanctuary and everyone that's going to be joining us on Facebook Live. We're going to go ahead and get started. We still have a few people on their way, but we don't want to delay. We're going to go right into our next song, Psalm 26. Psalm 26, as we continue our Monday night Bible study through the book of Psalms. You know, I have to say, as we have, we did a verse 20, uh, excuse me, Psalm 25 on last week, and as we've gone through the Psalms, it, they truly are a uh, wonderful, a wonderful set of books. You know, we've already seen fear, uh, we've seen anger, we've seen persecution, we've seen rejoicing, we have seen all of these things uh, manifested in the song. Today we're going to be looking at or, or how do you address or how do you handle uh, situations when you are falsely uh, accused? Uh, what do you do? What's the right thing to do? What's the wrong thing to do? As we dive into it once again, Psalm 26. Psalm 26 tells us, Vindicate me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity. And I have trusted in the Lord without wavering. Examine me, O Lord, and try me. Test my mind and my heart, for your love and kindness is before my eyes. And I have walked in your truth. I do not sit with deceitful men, nor do I go with pretenders. I hate the assembly of evildoers, and I will not sit with the wicked. I shall wash my hands in innocence, and I will go about your altar. Excuse me, and I will go about your altar, O Lord, that I may proclaim with the voice of thanksgiving and declare all your wonders. O Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Do not take my soul away along with sinners, nor my life with men of bloodshed, in whose hand is a wicked scheme, and whose right hand is full of bribes. But as for me, I shall walk in my integrity. Redeem me and be precious to me. My foot stands on a level place, and the congregation I shall bless the Lord. So, we, what we have here, or what we're going to be talking about here today, is uh, the righteous plea for innocence. The righteous plea for innocence, because that's what this is. Uh, this is another song of David in which he is protesting, uh, Lord, I have not done uh, these things which I am accused of. Lord, uh, examine me. Try me. Lord, you're going to see uh, that these things are true. Uh, it's a theme that we have actually uh, seen uh, before in a prior psalm. The, this, this notion, uh, it's Psalm 17. Hear a just cause, O Lord. Give heed to my cry. Give ear to my prayer, which is not from deceitful lips. Let your judgment come forth from your presence. Let your eyes look with equity. Uh, and there David was again saying, Lord, try me, Lord, examine me. Now, when I thought about this song, the, the first thing I thought about was what personally troubles me. You know, we have all had these things that sort of get under our skin that, that, that especially troubles us. And mine, for me, it's false accusations. I don't like being accused of something I didn't do. And I don't think I'm the only one. I mean, who does? I, I, I remember one time when I was in college. No, no, excuse me. I had already graduated college, but I was uh, working. You know, I wasn't really working in the field that I wanted with my degree. I was working at Bloomingdale's, and it was late at night, and I was leaving, and I had to use the bathroom. So I stopped off on the floor to use the bathroom, and then I forgot that I had a, didn't sign out. So I just signed out at one of the registers in the room, and... Uh, a few days or a few weeks later, I actually got accused of stealing something, uh, which I didn't do, of course, and they came after me hard and hard and hard. Ultimately, thank God, the situation worked out, but, you know, there, there's something that can be troubling, that can be uh, scary about uh, being uh, accused of a crime with, when really, you know, not a lot of things that you can sort of do to defend yourself. Well, uh, David... Uh, this seems to be a situation where uh, there is a uh, false accusation. This this is a lament song. This is 
this, this is a cry out, but it, but it's also a, a protective song. It's, it's asking for the Lord's uh, protection. Uh, and they're declaring their integrity. Lord, I, you know how I live, O oh God. Uh, therefore, come to my aid. And as we go through this, you know, we're going to see, because we, we, we've had this question before. How is it that, you know, David can say these type of things? We looked at this in Psalm 18, which we, uh, which we know uh, based on its location in 2 uh, Samuel towards the end of the book is coming towards or, or dealing with David at the end of his life. That song, he, he talked about how he has walked before the Lord in his life. And so we, uh, the question was asked, well, what about the sin with Bathsheba? We're going to come uh, back to that because it's a fair uh, question to ask. Uh, this song, as well as the next song, Psalm 27, I think one of our favorite songs, uh, one of the probably favorite songs in Christendom, uh, talks about being uh, in the presence of the Lord. Uh, and so we're going we're gonna to see that theme here, and we're going to see hey, that theme on uh, oh, next that high week. Here. Good. Uh, <laughs> As we uh, dive into the song here, uh, God bless you all. God bless you. God bless you. I'm, I'm, uh, um, God bless you. Thank you all. We're we're streaming live uh, tonight uh, on Facebook. But we're gonna. That's another thing. We're in Psalm twenty six. Psalm twenty six. Uh, we are, are. We just talked about. We're talking about the righteous plea for innocence. And uh, we're going to break this song um, down, or we're going to look, um, oh, excuse me. Now, uh, once again, we, we always say this, uh, there are some possibilities for when this song takes place, or what's the backdrop for this song, but we can't really be sure. Uh, some options suggest when Saul was pursuing David, and we know that we, you know, there was a, for years song, Saul wanted to kill David, uh, you know, because of how the, you know, the, you know, Saul has slain his thousands and David his ten thousands. We we remember that. Uh, another suggested uh, backdrop for this song would be uh, when Absalom, his son, when he rebelled against his father. Uh, we remember that story from 2 Samuel uh, chapters 14 through 16. But we know really Psalm 3 deals more directly with that one. Uh, Saul had a son after he died, uh, Ishbo, Ishboheth. Ishbaheth, um, who was um, who was killed unjustly, and some had accused David of that. And of course, there was a lastly there was a three year famine in Israel uh, that was that God brought because Saul killed the Gibeonites and he wasn't supposed to. Uh, and David was you know wanted to make sure that wasn't because of him. So those are some options that have been put out there. But again, we we really don't know. But uh, we've got 12 verses, and we're going to look at them in five parts. In five parts, we're going to break this psalm down. Uh, part one, uh, which is, we'll cover verses one through three, that's going to be uh, the prayer for vindication uh, and examination of character. Uh, the prayer for vindication uh, with the examination of character. Uh, the next part uh, will be his avoidance of the wicked. That's verses 4 and 5. His avoidance of the wicked. Part 3, verses 6 through 8, will talk about his declaration of innocence and his love of the Lord and the presence of the Lord. So his declaration of innocence and his love of the Lord and the presence of the Lord. That's verses 6 through 8, verses 9 through 10. Talk about uh, or deal with uh, the prayer not to be judged with the wicked. Uh, the prayer not to be judged with the wicked. Uh, that's verses 9 and 10, and then we'll finish off with 11 and 12. The declaration and prayer for vindication. The declaration and prayer for vindication. And at the end of it, I'll circle back, circle back around and give off five parts of that again. Uh, so, 
Vindicate me, O oh God. Vindicate me. Look, that, that word there, vindicate. Lord, it, uh, I ask you to make a declaration. I'm asking you to move rightly. I'm asking you to, God, I'm not guilty. And I'm asking you to, to, to declare me not guilty. Vindicate me, O oh Lord. For why? Because I have walked in your integrity. David is grounding his plea with his, the way he has walked with God. Uh, he has walked according to the will and the way of God. Yet we not he was not it was not a sinless walk. We understand that he sinned, that he made a mistake, but he 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 loved the Lord and he uh, desired to serve him. And 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 when we look at the totality of his life, he you know he was that man after God's own heart. So here he's saying, uh, Lord, I, I need to, to to prove that I'm not guilty. That. I did not do whatever I'm being accused of. And, you know, we're not told. Again, we, we don't have that background information, but, you know, of what charges or accusations are being leveled against me, against him. But he's saying, Lord, I'm not guilty. You are the just judge. You are the judge of all the earth. And so I need you to do right, not, uh, to declare me not guilty. And uh, that, that word also uh, carries with it the kind of, of taking revenge on the accuser. So after you declare me not guilty, to take action against those who falsely accuse me. Uh, we know that in our society in a civil setting, that if you know if you take someone to the trial and you know you you falsely accuse them, you know you can end up having to pay, and you lose, you can end up having to pay their lawyer fees. Uh, you know, loser pays. That it's not uniform across the country, but. Uh, that's what we'd be looking at now. Now that's a bold statement. Uh, why I have walked in my uh, integrity. Uh, what 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 does that mean? What what is he saying here? Well, I have walked in my integrity and I have trusted in the Lord without wavering. God, I I put my trust in you. Uh, Psalm twenty seven, Psalm twenty verse seven says, "Some boast in chariots and some in horses, but we will boast in the name of the Lord." Our God, Lord, I did not fail uh, to, I didn't look at anything else, God. I didn't look at anything else, anyone else, God. Uh, I uh, put my, my confidence in you as the one who could deliver. The same God who helped me defend my flock of sheep against the lion and the bear. The same God who gave me victory over uh, Goliath. Uh, the same God that who's responsible for me being king. Isaiah 31, uh, verse 1. Isaiah 31, verse 1 says, Woe to those who go down to Egypt for help and rely on horses, and trust in chariots because they are many, and in horsemen because they are very strong. But they do not look to the Holy One of Israel nor seek uh, the Lord. That's what David did not do. He trusted in the Lord. And so he said, Lord, I've trusted in you. I've walked according to your ways. I uh, uh, think about what's, what the Lord is asking here for a second. Examine me, O Lord, and try me. Test my mind and my heart. Uh, I, I'm just going to stop right there. Hey, Lord, I'm opening up myself to you uh, to examine my life, to examine uh, my entire being, my actions, my thoughts, my emotions. Uh, everything that I am and everything that I have done, literally it's in evaluate my kidneys and my heart, so, you know, take a look at my character. Now, let, let, let's stop right there for a moment. That I, uh, I know that I have said, Lord, show me me. Uh, Lord, Lord, show me myself, but uh, I don't know that I have gone this far before. Right? Yeah. I'm curious if anyone else have, have ever said that, Lord, I, I want you to do a deep dive inside of me. Uh, to, you know, to, to see what's going on there. And not to do a deep dive inside of me, but to do a deep dive inside of me. To, uh, that will show, Lord, that I have walked according to your ways. Has anyone been that bold? I, I, you know, I can't say that I have. I, I've said, Lord, show me me, thinking, Lord, I want the Lord to show me what's not like him in me so that, you know, I, I can deal with that. Uh, but 
uh, an astronaut would be able to examine the Lord. He's confident that uh, he can withstand uh, the Lord's examination of his heart, mind, and actions. And that at the end of it, that the Lord would say, "Not you're innocent, not that you're sinless. Yes, you have walked according to our ways. Lord, I know that if you look at me, uh, I will, my life would have lined up with your ways. And I can do that confidently. Uh, that, 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 that is a type of confidence to have. Verse 3, for your loving kindness is before my eyes, and I have walked in your truth. Uh, he, he appeals to the Lord's uh, faithfulness of him. The, the Lord has been faithful to him. The Lord has shown himself strong and powerful and, and mighty in David's life. And the Lord has uh, blessed David. And as a response to that, in response to the Lord's actions, uh, David has acted uh, because of what the Lord did for uh, David. David has responded with loyal service to the Lord. Psalm uh, Psalm 1835 says, You have also given me the shield of your salvation, and your right hand upholds me, and your gentleness makes me great. That's Psalm 1835, and, uh, and I'll read these in your hearing. First, uh, First John 4 and 9. First John, excuse me, First John 4, 19. First John 4, 19 says, We love, or we love him, or we love you, uh, because he first loved us. Yeah. So David is saying, Lord, you know, you have you revealed yourself to me. Lord, for first today would be as Lord, you you died on the cross for me, you set your love on me, you pulled me out of my sin, you saved me, you delivered me, and, and as a result of what the Lord did for us, so we love him. We want to serve him. We want to walk according uh, to him. We we want to be pleasing uh, to him. And again, this is David saying, I, uh, Lord, you did this for me, and by, by consequence of your actions, you've given me the desire and, and, and the ability uh, for us, you know, we, his grace, you know, his, his grace is not just unmerited favor, but it's also enabling power. He has empowered uh, and us to serve him, uh, and so that, you know, we don't, we no longer need to sort of fear him in terms of being afraid, we reference him, and we want to do that which is pleasing uh, to him. You know, so that so that's that's his prayer for vindication. Lord, uh, come to my aid, Lord. You know, uh, I'm asking for a right verdict because of my this is the way that my life has gone. Um, now let me let, let me ask before we go on, and then, you know, always asking for questions and comments. Does does that does this sound like boasting to anybody? Uh, can this be construed as a boast, like? Look at what I have done, or who I have met. Yeah. All the glory to God. Amen. All the glory to God. Amen. And, and that's, we're going to come back to that, and that's the right uh, attitude. We're, we're going to see that later on. It's not about, I'm, I'm so big, I'm so bad, I'm a super Christian, I'm, I'm the holy one, you know, who goes to church, and, and you know, and I, and I sing in a choir, and, 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 and I handle the women's meeting, and, and the building fund, and I, I've done all of this program, and whatnot, and, you know, and, and everything's good in my life, but you, I, I, I saw you, I, I see you're still struggling with this, and I, you know, don't you know you're not supposed to be doing that, you know, no, this is, I, I dare say this is a humble confidence, a, a confidence that's based on the work of the Lord, in his life, in his life, and, any questions or comments before we go on to our next section? Okay. Verses 4 and 5. Verses 4 and 5. I do not sit with deceitful men, uh, nor will I go with pretenders. I hate the assembly of evildoers, and I will not sit with the wicked. Um, I'm going to ask for a volunteer to get Psalm 1. 
Psalm 1, verse 1. Uh, Psalm 1, uh, verse 1. Uh, and I want to I wanna have us read that. Read that. Psalm 1, uh, verse 1. I'm going to read it. Okay. Psalm 1, verse 1. Yep. Here. Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or stand around us with sinners or join in with mockers, but they delight in the law of the Lord, mediating air on it day and night. <clears throat> Good, thank you. Thanks. Uh, this is actually not the first verse, sorry. Uh, but that's exactly why. So he, this is an additional ground uh, for his appeal uh, in this section, his avoidance of the wicked. He, he's saying, uh, Lord, I, listen, I don't fellowship with deceitful or uh, deceitful, dishonest people, or uh, people who don't know how to tell the truth, or you know, when you're speaking with them or when you're dealing with them in business and elsewhere, they're not honest, they're not trustworthy. Uh, you know, these men are uh, these men and women, they're liars. Lord, I, I don't fellowship with them. They're, they're not in my circle of friends. Uh, number two, I don't enjoy uh, nor will I go with pretenders. Some translations say hypocrites. Uh, I, I don't enjoy the comfort of hypocrites. I, I, I'm not the type. Listen, if you say that you're going to do something, you need to do it. You know, if, you know, you can't. We can't do this where you're pretending to be one way in private and another way in public, man. That that's not cool. That's not right. It, eventually, it's gonna come. It's gonna come out. If we've seen nothing over the last couple of years, and if we look at all of the sort of the celebrities and, and various lines of. Uh, of industries and vocation, both uh, in the world and in the church, we've seen all kinds of stuff come out, all kinds of things that you would not think, uh, you know, things that go against public images come out. David saying, I I'm not with any of those people, or you won't find me in that crowd, and you won't see any uh, Facebook posts or, uh, or Twitter uh, posts with, you know, that have my picture with these people. They, they, you ain't gonna be able to connect us. Uh, he abhors the crowd of evil and, you know, uh, he doesn't get together with sort of the, the wicked people. So, you know, they, again, you know, they, you know, he's not sitting down with these people as they're, they're talking about their schemes and uh, their plotting. In fact, I hate the assembly of evildoers. Well, I, I don't want to be around them and I don't even like when they get together because they're plotting all kinds of mischief and, and trouble and, and whatnot. So this, uh, again, Psalm 1, 1, this is, this is another part of it. You know, that, uh, Lord, I've trusted in you, I've lived according to your way, and I have not, I have not hung out with these people. Now, we, we, we have to obviously make the point that there is sort of that sort of redemptive encounters where, you know, you're, you're dealing with some people because you, you know, you, you're trying to bring them the message of Christ. You're, you're trying to bring them... Uh, the gospel, you know, you're, you're trying to show the love of Christ. And so, you know, we, we understand, like, you know, when you're with family, unsafe family, or when you're with, you know, co-workers and, and whatnot, and, you, know, you, you know, you may sit down with, with lunch with them from time to time, and, and you're talking, you know, and, you know, just, uh, you know, when, you know, as the conversation's going, if you see an, oppor <clears throat> an opportunity to share the gospel, uh, you, you know, you, you can do that. Then we're not talking about that. We're talking about their your your bosom buddies, man. Hey, come on. We're we're gonna do this. You know, we're 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 gonna do out. You know, we're gonna go hang out here. No, no, I don't do that. I don't want to do that. I don't want any part of that because that is displeasing to the God that I serve. Uh, you know, as as he again as he as he talks about his his plea. For an innocent. Excuse me. Uh, questions, comments before we go into our third section. All right. Well, I mean, all you can do is pray for those people, right? All you can do is pray for them. You, you know, you you pray for them. You continue to live uh, holy among uh, uh, before them. So, you know, they. You, you give them the word of the gospel, and then your life is the gospel, you know. Your life is the, you know, is the living epistle. So, 
You know, let them see that unlike them, your words and your actions are aligning up. Um, that, that's all we can do. You know, Paul talks about at the beginning of 1 Corinthians when he's dealing with the issue of the church and how they've gotten themselves all divided and whatnot. And, you know, I'm a Paul and I'm a Apollos and I'm a Cephas and all that. Paul says, what is all of this? One planteth, um, the other one watereth, but it's God who gives the increase. All you can do is live holy in front of them, and the rest is the Holy Spirit's work. Uh, so no, you, you do that, you, you just, you know, they're not your bosom buddies that you're hanging around with all the time. Because elsewhere, I suppose the Bible say your, your evil is going to be um, evil spoken of. You know, Paul, you said you. Thank you. Let not your good be evil spoken of. Thank you. Uh, uh, God bless you. Know, I have a wonderful helpmeet, a wonderful <laughs> wife. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, since you. Yes, so, yes. I don't know if this is going to make any sense, but when I go report to Eddie Burke, because of my uh, DWI, and I see the other guys and the ladies there, and I feel like telling them, hey, look, I got a verse for you on, but I'm, I don't want to be a hypocrite because I'm here like you guys, but I want to tell you, your life can change if, if, you, look, if you want to. But uh, some of them, like, they're like, you know, like, hey, leave me alone, man. I'm not into God or just like that. Well, that's, that's, all, you can, that's all you can do because you can't draw them. Right. You can only give them the message. You can only let them see what God's doing in your life. Yeah. Um, if they turn and repent, wonderful. If they don't, they're increasing their own judgment because they've had, they had the message put before them and they rejected it. Uh, so really that, that's all that can be done. But you know, Paul says, to, therefore come out from their midst or come out from amongst them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing and I will welcome you. So that's his command. You know, we, we, we separate in terms that we don't fellowship, you know, but we're always we're still in the world, so we are letting our light shine. And, you know, we you know that that's the walk that we have to do. That that's why the road is narrow, uh, not wide, because uh, we know the wide is the way to destruction. But part but verse uh, section uh, three here, right? Uh, he's further declaring his innocence and also talking about his his love for the Lord. Uh, he says. I shall wash my hands in innocence, and I will go about your altar, O Lord, that I may proclaim with the voice of thanksgiving and declare all of your wonders. O Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory uh, dwells. I'm going to read that again in the Net Bible. The Net Bible, it says this, I maintain a pure lifestyle so I can appear before your altar, O Lord, to give you thanks and to tell about all your amazing deeds. O Lord, I love the temple where you live, the place where your splendor is revealed. So David has kept himself pure. Uh, you know, he understands what is required to enter into the presence of the Lord. Uh, a few weeks ago, uh, we talked about uh, Psalm 24. You know, another favorite psalm, I think, uh, of the church. It, you know, in verse, starting at verse 3, that psalm asks, Who may ascend to the hill of the Lord? And who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to falsehood or to vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive a blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, O Jacob. That was Psalm 24, verses 3. Through six, David has kept himself pure. Now, uh, uh, well, no, I, 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 I won't go there. He has kept himself pure. You know what does the presence of the Lord require? It, it requires that, and because he has done that, uh, he can he can praise the Lord. He's able, you know, to uh, to give God praise and to tell of the Lord's deeds. This is what the Lord has done. This is how good the Lord is. Look at what He's done for His creation. Look at what He's done for man. Look at uh, what he's done for me Amen. and for us. 
uh, the goodness. He, he saved me. He, you know, he, for, for the life of David, he, but there were many times when that sword was getting close to him and his men and he could have died, but the Lord has kept him. You know, many of the affliction of the righteous, but the Lord delivered them out of them all. You know, Lord, he, he has saved me. He, he kept uh, my wife and I some, during some times when we didn't know what, what, you know, where things were going to come from, where resources were going to come from. He was there. You know, he's been there for family and for friends. I can tell of these things. I, I can sing of these things. I, I've experienced these things. I know what I'm talking about. But if you're not living holy, if you're not living right, if you're not reading your word, if you're not studying it, if you're not striving, you, you can't do or say any of this. Uh, you don't even want to approach his temple or, or, or be around him. Uh, one, one possible backdrop for this psalm is, is you know, the visitors to the temple and there was a basin there where they would wash themselves. They, you know, they would clean their hands so that they could be pure entering uh, into the temple uh, as, as they're going into the presence of the Lord so that, so that they could actually offer their sacrifice. We, we know in, in the Levitical law, the Old Testament law, you know, there were actually sacrifices of thanksgiving that you would offer not to say, Lord, forgive me, just to say, Lord, Thank you. I, I'm grateful to you. But you had to be clean to do that. David said, in, in terms of my life, I have done this. And therefore, I'm able and I do and I will offer sacrifices of praise to you. Why I, I, I love the habitation of your house, verse 8, and, and the place where your glory dwells. You know, I, I love the temple where you live. The, the place where your splendor is revealed, the Psalm 27, which we'll be, be looking at, I think, next week. Um, I haven't decided yet. It's Christmas Eve. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, well, I'm being told no. So, <laughs> uh, no, we're not getting it. <laughs> uh, but Psalm 27, of course, says, One thing I have asked from the Lord, or one thing I have desired from the Lord, and that's I that I may dwell in the house of the Lord, when all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord uh, and to meditate, to inquire in his temple. That's what David is saying here. I love this. I love to be in the house of the Lord to give you praise, honor, and glory. I just love to be able to go down and bow at the altar and put my hands up in worship and, and do it with the saints. Uh, to, to be there uh, and, and as your presence. As your presence dwells with your people. Mm. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. The place where your glory dwells. The place where, you know, I, I, I go, growing up as a child, I heard it over and over again that, you know, here on earth is sort of a, a rehearsal for heaven because when we're, when we're before the throne, when we see him, when we're like him, when we will see him as he is, what are we going to be doing? And, uh, what, what is that song say? I can only imagine? Yeah. Uh, you know, are, you know, are, are we just going to worship? Are we going to fall on our knees? Are, are we going to be silent? Or are they, we going to be asking a million questions? I don't know, but I know we're going to be captivated yeah. by the Amen. splendor of God. Ah, Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I love the habitation Boom. of your house. Mm. And then he ships. He ships and he, he goes back and he, he talks uh, about uh, the wicked. Uh, and, and, uh, verses 9 and 10. Do not take away my soul. Excuse me. Do not take my soul away along uh, with sinners, nor my life with the men of bloodshed, in whose hands is a wicked scheme, and in whose right hand is full of bribes. Uh, another translation says, Do not sweep me away with sinners who, or execute me with violent people who are always ready to do wrong and, or offer a, offer a bribe. So, uh, Lord, don't, don't, listen, Lord, I'm not, I'm not doing these things. I'm not, I've separated myself from those who are, don't want to do right. You know, in, in, in the time of the Old Testament, in the time of David, you know, like, well, Israel was the covenant nation, but we know that not everyone in Israel was serving the Lord. 
Not everyone was seeking to do right. You had the covenant people who were faithful, and then you had those who were unfaithful. The ones that those are the ones that are talked about in Psalm 14, where it says, The fool has said in his heart, There is no God. That's what it's with the original meaning. You have these people, you know, they know that there's a covenant God, but they choose to act and live as if he doesn't exist. Uh, to, to, to deny him. Lord, I, I, I have not, you know, been with these people. I don't want to be treated like I mean, these blatant sinners. Yes, Lord, I sin. You and I sin. Uh, you know, we are we are saved, and, you know, we are, you know, we are being sanctified as progressive. You know, every day we walk we get closer to the Lord, we're, uh, we, you know, we're being sanctified. And the sacrifice won't end until we're actually with him. But we know that we're still going to fall. But, Lord, I, I'm not, they, they sin because they love to sin. They have no desire to serve you. They have no desire to do right. Uh, Lord, as we talked about sort of last week with, with Psalm 25, David said on multiplication, God, forgive me. God, I have fallen short. God, have mercy on me. I want to walk according to your ways. Pardon me, oh God, so that I may go forth again. Uh, I have not, I, you know, the, the, those people who, you know, who deal with bribes, who will, you know, grease the hands of uh, the, the, of the justice system to get what they want or, or, or accept the cash, you know, to, uh, to rule unjustly and, and the Bible and many of the prophets speak of unequal weights uh, in terms of cheating, in terms of cheating the people. I have stayed away from that. I have not done that. And therefore, Lord, I don't, when, when you, Lord, when you come and you judge, and we know that, Lord, that you are going to come and you are, you are going to judge. We know that he judged Israel. One of the, one of the toughest, uh, uh, for lack of a better word, books I sort of read, and I read one time the book of Ezekiel straight through. And it is a book that deals a lot with God's judgment against his people. And, you know, the, the extent, uh, the extent of the judgment. But even there, it talks about a remnant. You know, those who are weeping, those who are crying out, those who understand that this is because of the sin of the nature, those who are repenting. You know, Lord, I want to, Lord, you know, treat me like that remnant. Not like everything, like not everyone else who you're going to wipe away. I have served you, O oh Lord. I have not acted as these have acted. If, you know, in the context of a temple situation, you know, the speaker, who, the person who has come to the temple is asking for asylum. Uh, you know, he's saying, hey, look, I'm not, I'm not guilty. I, I'm not as what these, what I'm not done with these men have accused me of. And so a decision would have to be made. Uh, if it was in his favor, he could stay there in the temple. He could have refuge until the trial date. But, uh, you know, if his claims, the veracity of his claims was found to be false, the truthfulness of his claims were not borne out, he was expelled for the temple. And what was waiting for him outside the temple? It was death. That's what David is saying. Uh, Lord, I, you know, that you examine me. Going back to the beginning, you know that I am how I lived and walked. You know, don't, don't let me be condemned with them. Um, you know, this, this is, uh, this is, you know, the, the hope, you know, and the joy of the, the believer that, you know, Christ died on the cross. He bore our sins. He took upon himself the wrath of God that we could not handle. Uh, and after that, he rose in the Father and the Son. They sent the Spirit uh, who, who conforms us to the image of the Son. Who, uh, the Spirit who brought about the regeneration. The Spirit who brings the fruit in us uh, so that we don't have to worry about being condemned with the wicked. Because our penalty, the penalty that we, that we had to bear has already been paid. Amen. Thanks be to God for the great things he has done. But as for me, I shall walk in my integrity. Redeem me and be gracious to me. Verse 11. My foot stands on a level place. And the congregation, I uh, shall bless the Lord. Uh, I stand in the level place. I am safe. I am upon the rock. Mm. 
David here goes back. He, he returns to his original appeal. Uh, he has and he will continue to act with integrity. Uh, say, he's saying, God, come to my aid. On that basis, God, come to my aid. God, have mercy upon me. Be gracious to me, O oh God. God, you, I can't deal with all of this or all of these things that are coming against me. Lord, I need you. We, I need you. We, David needed him. We need him. Uh, as uh, I, I keep saying, you know, as, as we progress, we're almost at the end of 2018. We're going into 2019, and I have a feeling that the world in 2019 will be even crazier than it was in 2018. Be gracious to me, oh God. I need, I need you. you know, I, I'm reminded of the song, and this was one of my Godfather's favorite songs. We sang it all, all the time in uh, Gethsemane, my church in, in New York. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour, I need thee. Bless me now. I'm going to stop singing because I don't want to scare anyone off. Help <laughs> <laughs> God. Oh, gentle Savior, I come to thee. We thank you that we can come to him. We can come boldly to the bone of grace that we might obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Redeem me. Come to my aid. Deliver me. Why? I, my foot stands on a level place. I'm in a safe place. Lord, I'm trusting in you. Lord, I'm not the one, as Christ says in Matthew 7, 24 to 27, I'm not the one who's built their house upon the sand. The rain falls and the wind blows and the storms come and the, and the house falls. But no, Lord, I, I have stood upon you. You are the rock. The, that's how Psalm uh, 18 began. You're, you're my rock, my shield, my fortress. You know, you know, you're my, in Proverbs talks about the name of the Lord, the strong tower. I stand on a safe place, a secure place, a level place. A level place. There's, there's no cracks or you know there or nothing like this. I can be comforted here because I'm in you. Uh, he trusts in the Lord. Therefore, that, that's why he can be secure. He's not trusting in the horses and the chariots. Uh, you know, he's not trusting in, you know, to bring it back to today in the bank account, to, you know, in, in the jury, you know, that uh, you know, I, I just I'm taking a wait and see approach, you know. Uh, not a wait and see. I'm taking a patient approach with the stock market because it's, you know, it's going hundreds of points a day in, in either direction. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm not trusting uh, in that. We don't trust in that. In, in the homes, in the cars, in the people that we elect. You know, you know, we, you know I'm trusting in you, Lord. Why? Because every ruler that rules, rules only because they are allowed to by him. He sets up kings and he takes them down. Uh, there is not, God never is called off guard. He never has a plan B. Uh, he never needs a background plan because he's sovereign. Everything is everything is, is subject to him anyway. You know, we learned that with Job. Uh, have you considered my servant Job? God is in control of it all. I stand on a level place. Stand in a secure place. In the congregations, I shall bless the Lord. In the assemblies, I shall bless the Lord. I will praise you amongst your people. I will praise you amongst those who aren't your people. I will make, they all will know who you are. You know, the believers who sometimes need to be encouraged and, and be reminded. The unbeliever who needs to be called to repent. In the congregation, I shall bless the Lord. I shall give praises unto our God in the midst of the people. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I always come back, you know, it, you know, the Christ said in, in, in the gospels that the scriptures cannot be broken. You know, they all flow together. They all come together. That, you know, th this is, you know, uh, that confidence, that, that assurance, knowing who God is, is why we can count it all joy. It's why we can consider it joy. It's why even though the situation itself might be joyous, 
Uh, we, we can count in joy because we know if, if this is happening and we know that God is in control, that means God is doing something. He's seeking to bring about something. And, you know, we're going to come along that the trusting of your faith produces patience. Uh, uh, you know, let patience have a perfect work that the man of God may be complete. Hallelujah. Amen. I stand on a level place. So then, uh, I, let me bring it all together with this, as we, you know, as we looked at um, this uh, this song here, and we we looked at our five parts. So part one was the prayer for vindication, with the examination of character. Part two was the avoidance of the wicked. That was verses one through three, and verses four and five. Part three was the declaration of innocence and love of the Lord and His presence. That was verses six through eight. Um, Part four was the prayer not to be judged with the wicked. That was verses nine and ten. And then the declaration, again, another declaration and another prayer for uh, vindication. That was verses 11 and 12. This song tells us that there are four things we need to do. Excuse me, sorry. Number one, we must... Tr- Realize I have a typo here. Anyway, we must trust God absolutely and continuously. Uh, you know, there can never be a point where we stop trusting Him. And we've got to trust Him, Lord. I, I'm not semi trusting you. I've, I've got this plan B. I've got this side hustle going on. No, Lord, I trust you absolutely and completely. Number two, we must walk according to the word. That second one flows from the first one because if we put in our trust in God, okay, Lord, I'm going to do as you would have me to do. I'm going to walk according to your word. Why? Because I trust you. We must walk according to the word. Number three, we must come out from the world and be separate. We are always going to be in this world so long as we are alive. Uh, But we are not of the world. So yes, that. Uh, number three, we must come out from among the world and be separate. You know, scripture reference there is 2 Corinthians 6, 17. Uh, number four, we must love the presence of the Lord. We have, must love the presence of the Lord. You know, we've got to love to be around Him. We've got to love to be in His house. We've got to enjoy bringing, up, bringing around our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. And I know that last part can be difficult sometimes. Sometimes our brothers and sisters try us, to, just like our family members and try us, but sometimes we try them too. But we come together, we fellowship, we laugh, we encourage, we confess our sins. You know, we're all part of one body, we're all working together, we're building up one another, you know, we're edifying one another, we're being strengthened by the word, we're worshiping our God. So really, I, I guess I would amend that to say we must love the presence of the Lord uh, and, you know, the people of the Lord. Love being in the presence of the Lord with the people of the Lord. Uh, these things will enable us to have the confidence that's expressed here. This is how we would be able to say, Lord, examine me. Oh, Lord, try me. Test my heart and mind. Go back to, to verse 2. We can say, Lord, I, I, and frankly, we should be saying this anyway. Lord, I'm an open book to you. Because, Lord, I, I want a full-throated examination of me. Lord, you know things about me that I don't know. Uh, Lord, you know, sometimes people can see things in us that we can't see. And that's why we have to be sort of humble and listen to, you know, uh, so much more the Creator. Uh, test me, try me, oh God. You know, we can have that confidence of the psalmist. And, and as our, um, as Gene here so correctly and succinctly pointed out earlier, uh, it's a confidence based on who God is. Yeah. A confidence based on what He has done, He is doing, and what He is will do. You know, we'll end with you know the, this one of my. It's become one of my favorite scriptures in Philippians one six. Being confident in this one thing or this very thing, that He that has begun a good work in you shall perform it unto the day of Christ Jesus.